Hello, um, I'm Bo Tao. So today I'm going to introduce you our Kabul-like um, AR headset, which is HoloKit. And uh, I will also t talk about uh, what you're going to make with it and uh, how we make with it. And um, yeah, this is me. You can call me Amber. And um, I am currently an Imagineer at my own studio, Amber Garage, in Silicon Valley. And uh, I graduated from Stanford University and uh, work at several different computer science domains, AI, HCI, uh, robotics, and uh, games. So today I have a lot of things to share with you. And uh, my, um, my first, uh, I first will introduce HoloKit. And then I will talk about how people make it with it. And then I will talk about multiplayer code spacing AR. And then possibly I will show some video. And uh, um, first, we, let's talk about HoloKit. So in current AR um, headset market, uh, there are already a lot of good device. And, uh, but the problem is the, the, uh, the price is at least $1,000. The main challenge um, for AR is how to bring down the price barrier to um, like under $100 or $200, still maintaining a very high, uh, like a good AR experience and a very good AR quality. And uh, it's 2018. And uh, instead of waiting for AR, um, like consumer product to come up, why not you can make yourself one like this? This is it. And <laughs> yeah, this is a blueprint of the cardboard version of HoloKit. It's so simple and it really works. And see those people. I'm going to see this, you know, one of these things? You see a hologram over a person. And this guy invented it. <laughs> So we released HoloKit last year, June, and um, people like it. Yes, and um, like from TechCrunch, uh, it's just like Google Cardboard, but for augmented reality. So we, yeah, just like uh, three years ago, Google did for VR. And uh, after we released HoloKit, we received a lot of uh, media coverage and uh, led a lot of discussion over the internet. And it seems like people really like this idea. And um, the key advantage of HoloKit is three things at the same time. First, we have large field of view. It has 76 degree of uh, field of view in diagonal. And uh, it has a six degree of freedom tracking in the space. And also, it's a standalone device. And um, the, the product, like Google Glass, it has no tracking. And the, uh, Microsoft uh, HoloLens is awesome, but it only um, like have a, a 35 degree of free, a field of view. And Meta is awesome, but you have to tether to a PC. So, like, so you can have uh, that in thirty dollar, like uh, have all the feature with your, with your smartphone. And <laughs> and uh, we open source our tracking algorithm this year. We call this technology Beans. And uh, we released that on the, uh, GitHub, and uh, we got like 500 stars on uh, GitHub. 
and uh, we published a paper on ISMAR and this year, this year, uh, last year, and uh, please cite us. <laughs> and this is a comparison between wings and the tango. We have a side-by-side -side comparison between Tango and uh, a, a normal iPhone running our Wings algorithm. We, have, um, we actually, the conclusion is we have a better long time tracking ability because we have a loop closure algorithm to help to recover the bad tracking. You can see on top one, so on, on the top top, and we can see after um, we, we lose track of the tracking a little bit, we will like a snap back after we recover from the uh, feature. So, but unfortunately, Apple released ARKit after we re released Wings in three months. And, but fortunately, it makes things easier for us. So we decided to embrace ARKit. It includes that in our HoloKey SDK. So our Wings, uh, uh, um, our Wings algorithm will be still keep open source as a reference for other platform like Android. So our major um, um, SDK will just uh, maintain on top of like uh, AR kit. So it's more reliable. And wait, you might ask why HoloKey looks like a periscope shape? And uh, because tracking is the key for AR experience, Without tracking, AR is just a heads-up display, which is very boring. You can see the, the image just uh, move with your head. And uh, we have to use the rear camera of the phone to receive high-quality tracking. So we have to put the back of the iPhone in the front of the device to see the outside world. So the half mirror will help to combine the, uh, the reality and uh, the virtual uh, scene together directly projected to on, your, uh, on your eye. But, uh, um, and this uh, periscope uh, structure, I think it's the only minimum structure which we think can combine uh, the, both tracking and display together. And uh, all other like, uh, design for this kind of cardboard uh, cannot like, have tracking and also display at the same time. Another way to use HoloKit is upside down. So I think there's no other uh, minimum structure for that. So that's why HoloKit is like uh, a periscope uh, like a shape. You might ask, uh, there's another pro a project called, called uh, Mira. They also have uh, a structure, but Mira suffering from they cannot use AR kit because they only have front camera in front, so uh, they cannot see uh, using the back uh, the high quality rear camera to do the tracking. So they have to using some other solution like a marker to do the tracking ability. So here's the how it looks like um, in HoloKit. So it directly shot from um, the device. So there's no visual effect. And this project is led by me and also uh, FY from NYU. And we have Xiao Jiexuan from Hong Kong USD and also Kern Pauling from um, uh, NYU as our advisor for this project. So second part, I will talk about what people, uh, what people made with uh, HoloKit. Here's the timeline. And we released HoloKit on June and last year, and then we uh, give away 1,000 units on SIGGRAPH last year to all the developers all, the world, the world, uh, all around the world. We um, partnership with uh, a Chinese largest game company, NetEast, on, uh, on September, and then we founded a HoloKey developer community on last, uh, last month. And then we will announce something cool in next few months which is confidential now. <laughs> and, okay, you might ask who need um, HoloKit. The first batch of HoloKit order of all from schools. And uh, when I study VR in Stanford, I, uh, from Go Gordon's class, a uh, class, and I know the pain of the teacher uh, to distribute enough device to the class. And, um, but the school cannot off, 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 um, like, um, like afford like 30 HoloLenses to everyone in a class. Of course, HoloKit will be a good alternative for a class for students to learn how to develop an AR experience. 
Currently, Stanford, CMU, NYU, Hong Kong UST are already using HoloKey in their class. How about MIT? <laughs> <laughs> and then, the next group are from um, branding and also um, advertising, uh, advertising agency. They use it for theme park and also for car exhibition. It makes total sense because in this scenario, they need a cheap device to demonstrate the AR experience to large volume of people, large vo a group of users. And then uh, this, uh, uh, there's some uh, visualization for industrial um, application, such like uh, drones and also uh, medical. Here's an example from um, a company called Medibees from NYU. They use HoloKit to uh, do the um, like CT scan. You can see that the model is in a layer using HoloKit, like that. Yep. And of course, game. And the game loves HoloKit. That's why we partnership with Chinese largest game company, NetEase. NetEase is actually the investor behind Natic, which is the company has Pokemon Go and also Harry Potter Go. And also, they also have the redistribution right of Minecraft and also uh, Warcraft. And it's, it also has strong connection to Disney. So that's why we partnership with NetEase Games. And of course, in the future, HoloKey will help a lot of industry to reach um, large volume of users to have AR experience in their specific domain, like shopping, manufacturing, robotics, something like that. And then I will talk about multiplayer co-spacing AR. I think, in my opinion, co-spacing is the key of the success of AR. What's co-spacing? In the physical world, actually we share the same physical space, space physical scene. AR is just a virtual overlay over the physical world. We should also share the same physical, uh, virtual overlay as if it's in the physical world. So we're supposed to see the same virtual object at the same time. So there are different levels of co-spacing. There are local, marker-based uh, co-spacing. Um, this left one, like Vuforia did, uh, did that very good. And then we have the uh, local but markerless uh, co-spacing. And, and I think Microsoft uh, HoloLens have the spectator view, which um, help you have multiple users to see the uh, same virtual thing in different angle. Lastly, and uh, on the largest uh, scale, we hope we have an AR cloud, which is a global AR um, co-spacing, um, such as Google VPS, they have this kind of uh, uh, um, like ability. And uh, we think uh, local markless co-spacing is very important and will enable um, a developer a lot of like creative thing, uh, creative idea, uh, not just by marker, because markless is easier for consumer to access. So we develop a local uh, markless co-spacing SDK uh, for all the HoloKit developer. And let's see how that help uh, uh, this, um, how, how uh, this SDK help people create uh, experience. First, ena enable multiplayer fighting game uh, because it knows where your friends are and uh, you can just fight like that. Yeah, these two people, <laughs> they shoot the fireball to each other and the system will judge if you hit your friend or not or miss, just like uh, just very simple game, but like a, it create a lot of fun when I uh, just randomly pick up people in the Grand Central. People will play this for half an hour just by very simply fire the uh, fireball. Because uh, the, the key thing is, is like um, AR actually increase the sociali uh, socialization because you can see people's face, people laughing, people um, like it. Like you can see their interaction on their face. That's very important thing. It's much, much, much more than a just gaming uh, visual effect. Yeah. And then we will talk about. Um, it also enables like a control of IoT, and uh, it, because it knows where your ro robot is and how that align with your physical location. 
So here's an example that I did. I have hand gesture control on the phone to control the robot arm with code spacing coordinate. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we also, um, we can also take one step further, and why not we use the other phone as six-stop controller. And like um, our partnership, NetEase Games, helped me to uh, develop a tool brush-like uh, um, experience. Uh, we call it HoloTouch, and uh, we, it just uses another phone as a controller to draw, so you can, you can enjoy it. This guy wear a HoloKit, and uh, use another phone to draw cloud, maybe. So this video is filmed by another phone. So it's, it's code space. Three phones is code space. One phone on his headphone, a uh, headset. One phone is on his hand. One phone is the, the, the one filming this. So they are all code spaced. And also, he can, can, he can draw anything he like. <laughs> maybe an arrow. Dope. And it's also collaborative. So you can do a tic tac toe. And also, you can be. Uh, more collaborative, like dance together. That's, uh, that's code spacing. I think code spacing is very, very important for AR. AR not just displaying something in front of you, which I call it head up, uh, heads up display. It's a very, very old concept. I think make a, uh, what makes AR really different from VR is just, just code spacing, because we need to communicate. We need to collaborate. And we need another layer of the physical world. So yeah. So what's next? We will have. A very beautiful consumer version will be available in the next few months. And uh, it's very beautiful and much better than the current couple version. So, and uh, it will be still maintain very cheap price. And uh, don't worry, it's like that's the purpose for this project. So, here's my question for you. What, you, uh, what will you make uh, with HoloKit? So, yeah, thank you.